the next section is called Truth, Sense, and Psychic Reality. Beyond believed that the mind needs truth in order to grow the way the body needs physical nourishment. However, the questions of what truth is, how one arrives at it and recognizes that one has arrived, and whether one can ever do more than closely approximate to psychic truth remain very complex matters indeed. The objects of psychoanalysis, emotions, states of mind, the unconscious, are psychic qualities, but as such, they are ineffable and not available to perception via the modality of the senses. Green argued that, quote, supplying content to what is experienced only in unrepresentable form is a fundamental task of the psychic apparatus, unquote. Content implies ideation and language. Language, however, will always to some extent prove insufficient to the task. In analysis, we are faced with communicating about an experience which by definition is impossible to fully translate into words. There is always a gap, a space that offers and requires the possibility of being filled with something new. Much of Bion's late work from 1970 on centers upon the structural problem of how the truth of psychic qualities can be discerned and to what extent that truth can come to be known. In Attention and Interpretation, Bion argued that psychoanalytic inquiry is dependent upon the recognition and exploration of a kind of experience that is not of the senses. While a physician may observe a patient's jaundice, feel their irregular pulse, recoil at the smell of an infected wound, quote, the realizations with which a psychoanalyst deals cannot be seen or touched. Anxiety has no shape or color, smell or sound, unquote. That's beyond speaking. Of course, Anxiety may produce physiological changes that are observable, rapid pulse, respiration, sweating, but Bion considered these to be secondary to the thing in itself, the psychic state. They may lead one to infer the presence of the psychic state, but that inference or indication is not assumed to be the same as directly observing the psychic state. This limitation is a limitation in knowing or knowing about. It implies that in relation to psychic qualities and psychic reality, there is always an enigmatic space that exists and that can be filled with a variety of suitable but always approximate ideational forms. When we attempt to discern psychic reality beyond proposed that in place of the senses and empirically deduced evidence, we must rely upon something he called intuition, which he described as a nonspecific, largely unconscious ego function that allowed the analyst to somehow spontaneously grasp or intuit the psychic reality, the truth of the session by becoming one with it. But this formulation, intuition and becoming one with the truth of the session, this formulation seems to create more problems than it solves. As a psychic quality, intuition has its own enigmatic, ineffable dimension and is also subject to all of the vicissitudes of unconscious influence and distortion. How then to be sure of the correctness or truth of one's intuition when one is intuiting the psychic state or psychic reality of oneself or another. Epistemologically speaking, what is psychic reality? Although not of the senses in the way that ordinary concrete reality is assumed to be, psychic reality is an experience, but of what kind and how and to what extent is it to be known? Therein lies the problem.